Mumps occurs worldwide. It is caused by a virus called mumps virus which typically tends to peak in late winter to early spring. Before the implementation of routine vaccination program, mumps historically has been a highly prevalent endemic disease, which most commonly affected school age and college age individuals. Although, mumps can occur in fully vaccinated persons, symptoms and complications are much less severe in vaccinated persons compared with those who aren't. Mumps is considered as an infectious disease with a worldwide distribution. It is caused by a highly contagious RNA virus, which belongs to the Paramyxoviridae family of viruses. We humans, are the only natural host of the mumps virus. Mumps is spread in the same way as colds and flu. The virus particles are mainly transmitted through inhalation of respiratory droplets, close contact or fomites. This is why living in close quarters such as college dormitories, enhances mumps spread and can cause sporadic outbreaks. Many aspects of the development of mumps are not well understood, and further in-depth clinical studies are needed. Experimental studies show that, following exposure to infected droplets, the viral particles infect epithelial cells in the upper respiratory tract such as nasal cavity, mouth, and throat. Afterward, the virus spreads to the parotid glands, causing pain, tenderness, and swelling in one or both parotid salivary glands. This condition is so-called parotitis which gives a person with mumps a distinctive hamster face appearance. Other salivary glands under the floor of the mouth also may swell but do so less frequently. Soon after, the virus invades regional lymph nodes of head and neck, and from there, gets into bloodstream. Note that, the presence of viral particles in bloodstream, is known as viremia. Mumps viremia typically lasts for 7 to 10 days, during which the virus spreads throughout the body. The clinical manifestations of mumps play a determining role in proper diagnosis of the disease. First remember that, not all patients with mumps have symptoms. Those who do, will have symptoms 12 to 25 days after exposure. Mumps typically begins with a few days of nonspecific, mild symptoms such as fever, sore throat, headache and muscle aches, lack of energy, and loss of appetite. These prodromal symptoms are usually followed by development of parotitis within 48 hours. Keep in mind that, mumps is most recognizable by parotitis. Parotitis often occurs in children between 2 to 9 years of age, and can last up to 10 days. Moreover, parotitis is the most common symptom and occurs in nearly 90% of all symptomatic patients. While mumps is often self-limited and majority of patients recover completely within a few weeks, it's necessary to contact a general practitioner if you suspect mumps so a proper diagnosis can be made. That's because serious infections such as tonsillitis and glandular fever are in the differential diagnosis and thereby may be mistaken for mumps. Unfortunately underestimating these infections can be dangerous and even life-threatening. So never try to diagnose mumps without medical consult. Mumps can occasionally cause complications, especially in adults. Inflammation of the testicles also known as orchitis, this can decrease fertility in boys, remember. Inflammation of the ovaries and breast tissue which are termed as oophoritis and mastitis respectively. Inflammation of pancreas tissue or pancreatitis. Inflammation of the brain or encephalitis, and inflammation of the membranes covering the brain and spinal cord which is so-called meningitis, are known complications of mumps disease. Sometimes the virus causes deafness in one or both ears. If there is any other medical complication let me know in the comments down below. There is no specific antiviral medication for mumps. So, treatment is aimed at relieving symptoms and preventing complications. Getting plenty of bed rest, fluids and soft food. Using painkillers, like acetaminophen and ibuprofen. Aspirin should not be given to children under 16, remember. And applying warm or cold compress to the swollen parotid glands, are some effective non-medical ways to relieve patient symptoms. Thanks for your watching. Please let me know the pediatric issues you are willing to learn. Write them in the comments for me.